So the question this morning is, how do you deal with the sadness in your life? And that's what I want to help you with today. And it begins very simply with this. Accept your sadness. Accept it. We, we need to be able to accept the reality of loss. We need to be able to accept the feelings of sadness that enter into our heart and mind. To not accept this, to try to push it aside, to ignore it, to stuff it, it doesn't work. Stuffing your feelings of sadness really just end up poisoning you from the inside out. It's like taking a poison. There's no healthy way to deal with sadness that involves stuffing it or ignoring it or pretending it doesn't exist. My 26-year-old nephew with his whole life in front of him, is gone. And that is forever, and there's nothing that anyone can do about it. To face that reality is difficult. I understand that. I've been living it. To face the reality, maybe you came here today, or you're listening or watching today, you know, you just had a major breakup. You thought this relationship might lead to marriage, and happily ever after, and it's over and you're heartbroken. There's no way to paint a pretty picture of that. What I can say to you is that sorrow is for a season. And time does heal. It's absolutely the truth. Time will heal a broken heart. And given enough time, and enough of what we'll talk about today, you can, you can move past it. And you have to. You have to. Sometimes people think, well, it's disrespectful to, to sort of want to move past. It doesn't honor the person in, you know, in terms of a loss, but that, that's not true. And you have to move past the loss of a job, and you, you have to move past the sickness or the illness. You, staying there will not help you to get better. And I would say to you that it's possible even, and this is something I've learned, so I'll just share it with you. It's not something anyone told me. In fact, it go, it's a bit counterintuitive for the way that I'm wired up. So it's taken me a while to really accept this to be true, but I believe it's true. So here it is. I believe that sorrow and happiness can coexist. I believe it's possible, I think it's probable in life, that you can have very good things happening and very sad things happening at the same time. Do you agree with that? I think that is true. I was always under the assumption that you're either up or down. You're either winning or losing. You know, you're either, either in the mount, on the mountaintop or you're in the valley. But I've really come to believe that life is sort of like, you know, like tracks on a train, you know, and there's this side of the track and there's that side of the track and the train has wheels on both sides of the track and... That's just the way life is. Now listen. Some people think about sadness and, uh, you know, they think somehow God, if you express that to God, that, you know, he's going to be upset with you. And I would just say this to you. Asking God to help you understand is trying to find an answer. And God welcomes that. In fact, God will many times direct you to that, and we'll we'll talk about that. Blaming God is a different story, because that's assuming you already know the answer. You already know the answer, and you just want to blame God for it. I don't think that's a good approach, but I don't see anything wrong with sort of asking God to help you to understand why things happen the way they happen. And I would also say this kind of on the other side of the spectrum of a lost job or a sickness or a a breakup of a relationship, I would say sometimes we aren't experiencing sadness in our lives, and it's not because we're being spared. 
as much as because we're sort of setting the bar too low. If you have lofty goals, then prepare to be disappointed. It's just the way it is. And if you say to yourself, I want to play it safe, I don't want to feel the pain, I don't want to have the disappointment, I don't want the sadness to fill my heart and my mind, so I'm going to sort of stay at a very low level of expectation, I think you just miss out. You miss out on what God has for you. You miss out on God's best for you. And to coin the phrase that's been used around here for years, you won't re reach your God-given potential. And we should all want to pursue our God-given potential. We, we should all want to be as much as God has created us to be, whatever that is. But some of you are, are just playing a kind of game where you're saying, I'm not going to get hurt. I'm not going to open myself up and in doing so, you're missing out. You're missing out. 